Uh, we're going to talk about the latest BBB research as we start to get those questions to come in. So your scam tracker found that 66% of responders reported losing money to a COVID scam since March 1st. That is a big number there. So there are a lot of scams out there. We want to start with employment scams. Michelle, what makes up an employment scam? So an employment scam works like this. You have applied for jobs, you've got your information out there, and then you either get a text or an email saying, hey, oh, we want to interview you for a job. And then you might do it only by Google Hangout, but the scammers have gotten a little more sophisticated and they're more high touch now these days. So they may call you on the phone. They may call you two or three times on the phone, and then they're gonna send you paperwork that looks real, looks like a real job offer and all of the real forms. And they're doing all of this to convince you that the job they're offering you is real. But then people could do the work and not get paid or lose their personal information. They could also be out of money. We never like that. Uh, and Lachelle, honestly, most of the people who would be out this money because of a scam, they're already out of work. They can't afford to do that. What's the average amount that's lost through these? So it, the numbers are broken out by male and female. So male is that they men lose about $850 and women lose about $1,300. Interesting. So the research also found that there was one job title that popped up the most often that turned out to be a scam. What should people be looking out for in the job descriptions? So that job title is, let me get to it. Um, it is a warehouse distribution coordinator. And the title sounds specific, but the description is really vague. So it can en engulf a whole bunch of people who might be interested in this position. And we actually found that 65% of the people who reported employment scams actually were offered a job with that title or something similar. Interesting. So look out for that as well. We're already getting questions into our text line. By the way, that number is at the bottom of your screen. Lachelle, someone wrote in and said, hey, I didn't do this, but I did get a call about having to pay a fee to make sure I received my entire stimulus check. And they said this has to be a scam, right? Absolutely. That's a scam. You don't have to do anything at all in order to get your stimulus money. But do be aware that it w could be coming by check or now one of those little debit cards. So those are the two ways that they're going to pay you, but they're not going to call you and you're not going to have to pay a fee to get your money. Another popular question we're getting is about price gouging. Is the BBB involved in any possible price gouging complaints right now? You have your eye on anything. You know, we were actually really lucky here in North Carolina. We didn't get any real price gouging complaints at all, which we were kind of surprised about, but it means that our businesses are doing really well. And, you know, the thing about price gouging, I think that sometimes people don't understand is, you know, we've seen prices going up and up on a lot of different products. And when you talk to businesses, sometimes their cost to make the product has gone up during these times. So it's normal for their price then to pass on to consumers is a little bit higher. But, you know, both the BBB and the Attorney General's office, if you encounter a price that you think is just outrageous, please let us know. You can go to BBB.org and file a complaint, or you could also reach out to the North Carolina Attorney General's office. But let us investigate and make sure that it's not just a, a normal price rise that mm -hmm. we hate to see but that it really is price gouging. All right, good point there. As someone said, if I get a phone call saying they're a contact tracer and I've been exposed to the virus, uh, how do you tell? Ooh, you know, that's a great question. One, I would say, let them talk and give you as much information as possible. They should have some specifics. And then get a number where you can call them back and look that phone number up look the person up who said that they called you and then look for that agency and find a number that is different than the one that they gave you and call that one do your own research find a number call and say i've been contacted about contact tracing with covid i want to make sure that this is a legitimate call because scammers are out there the other thing is is that the scammers will probably ask you information that may not need to be, to be for contract tracing, like mother's maiden name, social security number, things that can help them try to steal your identity. Those are two big red flags as well.
Yeah, you have to look out for those red flags because contact tracers will call you right now and they're doing important work. So we do want to help them out, but certainly some information they don't need to know. So I think that that's a good point there, Lachelle. A lot of questions about social security numbers, especially because there is more communication with the IRS right now between tax season and stimulus checks. Um, people just saying, why is it so important to protect your social security number? How do you know if it's the IRS really calling you and asking for that? Well, for the most part, 99% uh, of the time, the government is not going to call you, whether it's Social Security, IRS, the federal government, because you've got a warrant out for your arrest. They're never going to communicate with you in that way. They're going to communicate with you in writing. So that's a, a red flag right there. Now, the importance of your Social Security number, that's basically the key to your identity. Think about the applications that you have to fill out to get a phone, rent an apartment, buy a car, buy a house. You have to have your social security number. And so once a thief gets that, think about all the other information that's out there on the internet and that you've freely given or that companies publish or have. Plus then you've got the dark web where scammers are selling information that they've compiled about people. So if they've got your social security number, they just have to do a little bit of research to get mother's maiden name, you know, your full name, address, past addresses for you, because sometimes on an application you have to put something like that down. So you just really, really, if you don't protect anything else, protect your social security number. Yeah, good point. All right, Lachelle, stay right there. We're taking a quick break, but when we come back, we're answering more of your questions about how to protect yourself from scams. And don't forget, you can always search for scams near you or even report one using the Better Business Bureau's scam tracker. We've linked you to it on our website, WFMYNews2.com.